All right, hello, I'm Peter. And today we're gonna to look at some of my recent drawings for my drawing class at school. Art 220, all right. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. And I said I would keep you updated on these, but I've already done a couple of these assignments and I didn't record them mostly because part of the assignment was to do them at the place where I was drawing them. Like I, one of the, I'll, I'll show you and I'll explain each one. And then we're gonna do the next next drawing assignment and I will record it for you. Um, I think I record, I showed a video of me preparing this sketchbook and doing a little uh, introduction page here, which is a little over the top. This was the first assignment here. Part of this assignment was to draw what it's like to go to college in 2022. So I guess my ideas here were that there's a lot of, you know, you're kind of at home, you have lots of screens and you have everything at your fingertips, but you can still feel alone, even though there's some sense of information overload. It's like a lot and nothing at the same time. So, so I drew that. Anyways. And then here's a, an assignment, line encyclopedia. Each of these lines I was, we were listening to, this is an online class, drawing class. It's a little weird, but it's actually working. And uh, so I was listening to like vocal prompts. She was like, the professor was saying, you know, draw one line fast and then draw a line slow, draw a line with lots of pressure, you know? So th th these are lines with varying pressure. So it's hard to explain, but then here's a couple more assignments. Uh, contour drawings of a rotten old piece of bark that I found in the park nearby. I hope it was okay that I took that. I think it's okay. I have it in the shed now. This one with a marker and then this one with pencil. And this piece of bark was difficult to draw contour drawings of uh, because there's just, there's like an infinite number of lines. So for these first three drawings, this assignment, and then this, these three drawings were all one assignment. I got nine out of tens, all right? And I was like, okay, I see. I really gotta step it up for the next one. So the next assignment uh, is to sit here, actually I could sit anywhere, and do um, a contour drawing. Contour drawing basically just means no shading, uh, and just draw all the lines, all the details, just with lines, right? Some people think contour drawings mean, contour drawing means that it's just the outlines of things, but everything, even the things inside other objects have outlines. So all the details and uh, even textures can have contours, right, inside of them. So we're gonna do that here on the next page. And I'm gonna do this view right here. Let me show you with this camera, with the view, what I'm gonna draw more or less, all right? This is more or less what I'm gonna draw. Um, in fact, it's a little bit different because I actually did the drawing a few days ago. So uh, some things have changed, but so like this camera is gonna be in there, this light. Uh, there is a section of the video where I forgot to press record, the whole section where I draw this section of the room right there, but you'll get everything else where I draw the sketchbook and the desk and all the little tripod thingies. These uh, these gorilla pods, uh, they're <laughs> weirdly difficult to draw. So, all right, let's get to it. Contour drawing, just a bunch of lines and just get carried away with it. That's what we're trying to do here today. Just get it all in there. Don't sketch it out or plan it out first. It's okay if it all gets kind of warped and the, like my drawing is probably gonna have multiple vanishing points, everything. That's okay. Let's just draw and draw a lot. I'm gonna use this nice fountain pen from Gravitas Pens. It's one of the stacked nibs, very nice. Okay, first a small painting to get us warmed up because Squarespace makes it so easy to get your website set up. They help you with the 
the design, the hosting. They have all these templates to choose from, which I love. But even after you chose the template, it's so easy to customize it with all these little modules you can drag and drop. They're in different categories, like all of your social stuff is here, all the images and media and e-commerce. The e-commerce stuff is wonderful. I do that on my website and it works so well. People check out, buy stuff. It just all goes so smoothly. And then I just ship it off to them. Or even if you're not selling physical stuff, digital products emailed right to them. So check it out. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. Now, let's get into this drawing. Like I said, this is an 11 by 14 sketchbook, so it is a pretty big sheet of paper to fill up. And at first I was a little bit intimidated, but I like a lot of the drawing I do. I found that once I really got into the, like got into like a groove, um, basically I had to stop looking at my phone is what I'm trying to say, right? I had to stop texting all the time, stuff like that. Every now and then it's fine to pull the phone out just to, you know, because you, you, you even me, I draw for hours and hours and hours at a time sometimes, but that's only because I take every few minutes, I put the pen down, give my hand a rest, scroll on the phone a little bit or something. I just, I can't draw nonstop for hours because my hand will start hurting. But anyways, what I'm saying is I had to, to put the phone down. I just listened to like some music or audio book or something. I can't remember what I did. This was a few days ago, like I said, but once I got into that groove, I was, this is a lot different than most of the drawings I've done. If you've been to my channel before, usually I pretty much just look at the paper, right? I look at the paper and I enjoy the lines that are appearing there. But for this one, I had to look in two places, down at the paper and back up at what I was drawing. So there was a lot of up and down action and that was new for me, but it didn't feel totally, um, it didn't feel bad. I, like I got into it quickly and it worked. And one of the weirdest things about this whole drawing probably is as it started coming together and as the page started filling up, because one of the instructions was to not lay it out, like not say, not like beforehand, like no erasing was allowed, right? No pencil or anything. You couldn't like use a pencil to sketch out like, okay, this part of the drawing is the desk. This part is the wall. Like, we couldn't sketch out the structure of the drawing. It was very weird how, like I mentioned earlier, there were several different vanishing points. Uh, the proportion of certain things were off and it was like, I don't know. It's like building a puzzle piece by piece, but all the, pieces or different sizes or something. I just, I, I, I went about the drawing in kind of a clockwise circular motion around the paper. And by the time I came back around to kind of connect the different parts of the drawing, things weren't really matching up at all. Like one part of the floor would be here and one part of the floor would be way down there. I'm like, these parts are supposed to match up. I just kind of had to wing it and try to do something that looked okay. And probably if I hadn't told you that, you'd, you probably wouldn't have thought about it. Maybe you would have. I don't know how discerning your, your artistic eye is. I mean, obviously a lot of the lines are warped and kind of wobbly, but that wasn't, it wasn't the object of the assignment to make perfect lines. And I think personally that nice little wobbly, wiggly lines makes the drawing more interesting a lot of the time. Anyway, also, also I will tell you about the thing that kept me away for a few days between the time where I recorded this drawing and the time that I'm making this video now. I went on a little vacation to Colorado because my friends wanted to go skiing, but you know how FOMO is. It's just, you want to go. I want to go hang out. They don't ski all day, I thought. Well, no, they didn't scale day. You know, I got to hang out with them, but I just wanted to go relax. I try to relax at home sometimes, but I do the whole work from home thing. And it's hard to relax at home when your work is here and you're like, Oof, I could and maybe should be working even when you're trying to relax. But when I took myself all the way out to Colorado to hang out with my friends at the ski lodge or whatever we were at, uh, 
and I just sat there not skiing all day. Then I was like actually relaxing. I took my iPad. I just played Slay the Spire on my iPad for like hours and hours every day. Like I'm like, I couldn't, I couldn't do work right now if I wanted to. So I just like had to relax. I don't know. That's like, it was probably one of the most relaxing times I've had. I went and, you know, ski towns are nice to, to uh, explore. They have very weird uppity ritzy places. Um, like every, I've been to two ski towns, Jackson Hole and now Steamboat Springs is where I just went. And both of these places have had stores dedicated to not vinegar. Actually, I think there was vinegar in there. Um, I can't think of the word now because vinegar is in my head. Um, olive oil. That's it. Stores dedicated ex- pretty much expressly to olive oil, but they also branch out a tiny bit to things like vinegar and wine. And then they line the walls with these like special casks with uh, of olive oil. And they have little spigots and little tasting cups. It's very weird. I've only seen these stores in those places, but maybe those are the only nice towns I've been to that sell that have, I don't know. Maybe these stores are in other cool places. I don't know. It's just very weird. And I appreciate the weirdness, I guess. Not that I would ever buy expensive. Maybe I'm, I mean, maybe that's just a whole hobby I haven't tapped into yet. It's waiting for me. Maybe I need, I should have asked for samples. I'm just kicking myself right now that I didn't ask to sample each one. Maybe I could have started to develop a, an olive oil palette. Hmm. Oh, but one cool thing I did do while my friends were skiing is I, I did a horseback ride. Uh, we, they came and picked me up. We went out to a ranch, and I did, it was like a two-and-a-half-hour or three-hour horseback ride through the snow up a little mountain. It was amazing. My horse's name was North. Just an adorable little thing. It, I thought it was a big horse, but then I, when we got to the top of the mountain, the people leading the expedition, I don't think it was really an expedition. The hike, it's not a hike. The walk, the outing, people leading the outing got off their horses. We all stayed on our horses because they're like, hey, if you drop something, just don't drop something because if you get off your horse, we can't get you back up on the horse because the snow is too deep. It was pretty deep snow there. And... Anyways, they got off their horses. They took pictures of us on our horses. And I looked at that picture later. I'll put it on the screen right now. And the horse looked much smaller under me than it felt under me while I was. Maybe that's just the, a matter of perspective. Things closer to you seem bigger. And it was under me. It was so satisfying, though. It was This horse riding experience was a combination of um, extremely relaxing and soothing and it also made me feel awesome. Like I was a cowboy, of course. I've watched a lot of westerns, and maybe that's coming out in that experience. I was looking at all the ridges around me, waiting for bandits to pop up. Uh, and this, there was this old guy on the horse in front of me. He, he might have been like 80 years old, and he... He was riding kind of crooked or slumped in his saddle. His saddle was kind of sliding off one side of the horse, so he was kind of leaning the other way, and he wasn't, and he was just kind of hunched over. Maybe because he was old. I don't want to make assumptions about why old people do things. Maybe he was tired or just that was his posture. But I, in my mind, that was suddenly a like a wounded cowboy, and we were you know on the way back to the main camp. Because he was hunched just like they do in the movies. The wounded cowboys, you know, kind of hunched over, barely hanging onto the horse. They just got to make it back. We were going through the snow. And it and uh, yeah, it was just amazing. I had a great time. Just the ability to feel the horse, every little movement of the horse underneath you. I loved it. Okay. And I'm not, I've never been like a horse person, mostly because how big their mouths and teeth are freak me out like they could easily bite my hand or fingers off that freaks me out a little bit but I stayed away from the horse's mouth and it was wonderful and my legs were numb afterwards but that's probably normal uh I don't know it was it was awesome all right I looked like an idiot on that horse referring to that picture I'll show you but I felt 
amazing. That's the key. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this drawing. Thanks for listening, watching, subscribing, commenting, following, bell ringing, etc. I don't know. Uh, I forgot I'm supposed to remind people to subscribe sometimes. So please subscribe and I'll see you later. Let me know what grade you would give me on this. I, in 10 seconds, I'll tell you what grade I actually got. You have till then to comment what grade you would give me out of 15. The other drawings were out of 10, but this one is a doozy of a drawing. Out of 15, I got 15. Woo! I got 100%. It feels good. All right. Thank you for all your love and support. Appreciate it, everyone. And see you later. Goodbye.